Twelves of Silence by The Baxter, Chapter 15, 34 Weeks. Padme and Obi-Wan were beginning to get desperate. Anakin had been missing for 36 hours. She hadn't returned to the temple or Padme's apartment or the Senate building. Nobody had seen hide nor hair of her, and both Padme's and Bail Organa's security staff were combing the streets looking for her, as were the officers of the two twelves. Obi-Wan was beginning to fear that something had happened to her. She had, she had been hurt or kidnapped by separatists or gone into labor, or worse, she had left planet. If she was gone, finding her would be impossible without the council's help. Obi-Wan hadn't wanted to involve them or the authorities, but after so long, it was time. He just hoped he hadn't waited too long and serious harm hadn't come to Anakin. He turned to Padme, ready to, suge to suggest they return to the temple, when his calm link chirped. General Kenobi. Yes, Cody, what is it? His heart rate jumped in hope. He sensed Padme's do the same. I found her, sir. Stay on her, Cody. Don't lose her. We'll come to you. Where are you? A mid-level tavern by the name of Zhao. Neither Obi-Wan nor Padme recognized the name. Padme punched it into the speeder nav. It was close. He took off immediately. We'll be there soon, Cody. Don't lose her. Yes, sir. General Kenobi, a clone, waved the down from across the street. He and a couple others stood outside the doors of a steady-looking tavern, certainly not a place a clone would choose to frequent, or a Jedi for that matter. Obi-Wan and Padme hurried across the street. Cody, is she still here? The Jedi asked. Yes, sir. She is in one of the back rooms. Cody glanced at the other clones. They seemed quite drunk and generally disinterested in the whole affair, more preoccupied with watching the woman, the women walk past. Still, Cody pulled Obi-Wan and Padme a few steps away and lowered his voice. I don't think she's in her right mind, General. It's like she had a mental break. She didn't respond when I tried talking to her, but she lashed out when I approached, nearly gutted me with her lightsaber. He glanced around again and continued in an even lower voice. There was something I saw, sir. General Skywalker is... We know, Cody. Obi-Wan cut him off quickly, not wanting to risk sensitive ear ears hearing the complete statement. That's why we're here. The clone looked deeply troubled. How? Another time and place, Cody. Thank you for finding her. I'm sorry to cut into your R&R. &R. It was an emergency, General. Who, who are the others? Obi-Wan asked, nodding to the gawking clones. A couple of shinies. They're due for a write-up for public intoxication. See to them, Cody. We'll take it from here, and not a word about Anakin to anyone. Yes, sir. The clone saluted sharply before walking back to the others. He grabbed them by the shoulders and marched them up the street. Obi-Wan and Padme stepped into the tavern. It was noisy and crowded. The stench of liquor, questionable food, Body odor and smoke hung heavily in the air. A few scantily clad serving girls wo wove their way through the crowds, expertly balancing trays laden with food and drink. Nobody paid them any mind. Obi-Wan nudged Padme towards a back door. It led to a stairwell and the two climbed. The noise was cut significantly on the second floor. Five closed doors faced them along the sh a short hallway. Padme and Obi-Wan both moved to the farthest door. I'll go talk to her first, Obi-Wan said, stopping outside the door. Is she as, as bad as Cody said? I might have to talk her down. Padme opened his mouth to protest, but Obi-Wan was already moving. The Jedi slipped through the door. Obi-Wan barely had time to deflect the glass being hurled his way. 
it shattered against the wall just a few inches left of his ear. If you want to keep your head attached to your shoulders, you'll leave right now, Anakin growled. She was hunched over a table, her hood pulled over her head. Her lightsaber sat on, a ta on the table between her two clenched fists. Anakin, it's me. I'm here to take you home. Get out! She screamed in a, in a blink. Her lightsaber was in her hand and blazing blue. Obi-Wan took his only warning. He was not fighting Anakin while she was pregnant. He quickly ducked back out of the door. He grabbed Padme and stepped several free feet back from the door in case Anakin's lightsaber made an appearance. What happened? Padme asked immediately. It's not good. She didn't even listen to me. Maybe I should go talk to her. She's dangerous right now, Padme. I don't know if she would attack you. She's not in her right mind. Maybe she's just feeling threatened. You were fighting with her and she's associating the clones with the Jedi. That's probably why she lashed out. Let me try and talk to her. I might be able to get through. It's possible, but she's too unpredictable right now. I don't want to risk it. Just trust me on this, Obi-Wan. I can get to her. You should just go stand as at the far end of the hall. She can probably sense you right outside the door and it isn't helping. All right, but get out of here at the first sign of trouble. Obi-Wan clasped Padme's, Padme's shoulder briefly before retreating to the far end of the hall. Padme took a deep breath and stepped into the room. I told you to leave, Anakin snarled, turning towards him and activating her lightsaber. Her hair was unkept and there were dark circles beneath her eyes. She seemed unsteady on her feet. It looked like she hadn't slept in days. Padme held his hands up in the air. Annie, it's me. I'm just here to talk. Padme? She gasped and blinked, looking confused and relieved. She deactivated her lightsaber and swept her husband into a tight embrace. You came. Of course I did, Annie. I've been looking all over for you. Are you ready? Can we leave now? Leave? Why would we leave, Anakin? Anakin stepped back, looking confused. We're leaving, going somewhere safe, where we can be together, where we can be a family. I sent you a message. Padme held his wife's hands tight. What message? I, I sent a message. Anakin took a couple uneven steps back. Padme led her to a chair and she sank down on unsteady legs. Who did you send it? Who did you send it with? I sent a message, she insisted, blinking rapidly as if trying to clear something from her vision. When, Annie? When did you send it? Who did you give it to? Her next statement came out soft and unsure. I sent a message, didn't I? Padme swallowed back his tears. I never got it, Annie. I never got the message. I've been so worried about you. I didn't know where you were. I was afraid you weren't coming. I waited so long. I thought you had decided to leave us. Never, Anakin. I would never leave you. I love you with all my heart, and I always will. Padme held his wife close, just happy to see her alive and unhurt. Come on, let's go home. Anakin stiffened in his arms. I don't want to go back to the temple. No, Annie, we're going home. He supported her as she stood up. She wavered unsteadily on her feet and leaned on Padme. When was the last time you slept? Don't remember. Padme led her out into the hall. Obi-Wan was still standing by the far door, but he rushed forward when they came out. Anakin, thank goodness you're all right. He reached a hand out to help, but stopped short. Anakin didn't meet his eyes. Let's Get her out of here, Padme suggested gently.
giving no hint that Anakin was gripping his shoulder quite painfully. Of course. Anakin, let me fix your hood. Anakin said nothing as he pulled her hood up and re and readjusted her robe, making sure everything was still hidden beneath the outer layer. He stepped back only when he was satisfied that it was unlikely that anyone in the tavern would recognize her. It was a slow and steady walk to the speeder, but they got Anakin settled into the back seat and took off quickly. Thank you for your help, Padme. I should get her back to the temple. Padme practically heard Anakin bristle, but spoke quickly before she could. She shouldn't go back yet. Why not? She's still on edge, Obi-Wan. She's exhausted and frightened and flighty. If you take her back to the temple, we'll just end up at the same place in another day or two. Let's take her back to my place. It's neutral and safe. She can rest there. Obi-Wan stroked his beard. You may be right. You know, I'm sitting right here, Anakin muttered darkly from the back seat. Both Padme and Obi-Wan cringed. Sorry, Anakin. Padme apologized to his wife. What do you want to do? I don't want to go back to the temple yet, she said, crossing her arms tightly, looking pointedly at the floor. They all agreed, and Padme took them back to his apartment. He immediately took Anakin back to their bedroom and tucked her in, telling her to rest and promising that he would take care of everything. Anakin fell asleep almost immediately. He left her to rest and went to send Obi-Wan off. He knew the Jedi was concerned about Anakin, but he also knew his wife did not want to see him in the foreseeable future. She's sleeping, he announced to the Jedi, walking back into the lounge. I have a feeling she'll be out for the rest of the night. I'll call Bail and tell my staff to call off the search. You don't have to stick around, Obi-Wan. The Jedi nodded and walked back to his speeder. I should make sure her absence hasn't been noted at the temple. Are you sure you'll be okay? What if she's still unstable? I know how to contact you if anything happens, Padme assured him. He paused for a moment, Anakin's behavior weighed heavily on his mind. He wasn't sure if he wanted to bring up his concerns to Obi-Wan. What's wrong? The Jedi asked, sensing his hesitance. I'm just worried about Anakin. A mental break like this, it's not good. Is she going to talk to someone about it at the temple? That would be up to Anakin. I can't force her to speak to a healer. He hopped into the cockpit. Besides, I'm sure what happened was just a combination of stress and lack of sleep and hormones. He didn't sound as convinced as he tried to convey. Anakin would, has always been a bit rash when under stress. Not like this, she hasn't. We'll see how she's feeling after getting some sleep, and tomorrow I'll encourage her to talk to someone about what's troubling her, Obi-Wan concluded, trying to put himself and Padme at ease. Right, we'll see how she's feeling tomorrow, Padme echoed uncertainly, waving Obi-Wan off. The speeder disappeared into the, cor into the constant flow of Coruscant's traffic. Padme moved on to call off the search, assuring Bail that Anakin and the children seemed to be fine. Both his staff and Bales deserved a gift for their efforts, but he would figure that out in the morning. He had been awake almost as long as Anakin had, and he was exhausted too. He crawled into bed beside his wife, comfort comforted her, comforted just by her presence, glad she was safe in his arms again. Anakin woke up before dawn, wrapped up in Padme's arms. She sat up slowly, confused. Why wasn't she in the temple? She remembered being there and arguing with Obi-Wan. Had she gone to Padme's after the fight? Either way, she needed to get back to the temple before her absence was, noted, was noticed. After a quick trip to the fresher, she sat at the, on the edge of the bed, trying to pull on her boots. As quietly as possible. She got one boot on before an arm reached up and pulled her to lie back against her husband. Okay. 
You don't have to leave so early, Padme mumbled sleepily. Obi-Wan knows you're here. No need to sneak back. He what? Anakin's heart hammered in her chest. Why did Obi-Wan know she was here? Padme woke up more fully and sat up with his wife. Annie, don't you remember? We brought you back last night. Memories came back to Anakin. The last couple days were a hazy blur, but she definitely remembered being brought home last night. Oh yeah, I forgot. Guess I'm still waking up. She chuckled, dragging her hand over her eyes. I should still get back to the temple before anyone else notices I'm gone. Padme placed his hand over hers. Annie, with what happened, I just want to make sure you're all right before you go. I'm fine. I just hadn't slept in a few days. The twins kicked me something awful at night. I was just over tired and stressed that's all annie if you're so stressed maybe you should talk to someone i'm sure the council would give you leave from your duties if you asked you're 34 weeks pregnant anakin but busied herself with pulling her second boot on i can't do that padme the council needs me and you know i'd go crazy with nothing to do she turned and gave her husband a quick kiss. I'll be fine. I think I just needed to spend the night at home with you is all. Anakin. All right, I'll talk to a healer about it, okay? They kissed again, but Anakin pulled away sooner than either of them liked. I do have to go though. I'll see you later. Padme got up to see her off. They parted ways with a final kiss and a heartfelt I love you. He was still troubled about Anakin's behavior over the last few days, but she said she was fine and he would have to trust her. He couldn't force her to talk to a doctor either. End of chapter.